across Sussex there's around 28,000 people who live with a dementia. We know that the number of people who have a diagnosis of dementia is likely to increase and it's really important that within the trust we're able to respond to the needs of those patients and the family carers who are supporting them. It's been really exciting this last six months to be part of a feasibility study based in one of our community hospitals which has been looking at the impact of music-based interventions for our patients with dementia and memory loss. We've been able to bring musicians who've received training in working in healthcare settings who attend the ward on a weekly basis and there is an emerging evidence base to suggest that this is a very powerful way to work with people with dementia. In diseases such as Alzheimer's, the neurons that fire in response to musical stimulation are some of the last to be affected. So what happens is somebody may still be able to draw on lyrics of a favourite song because that part of the brain is still accessible. So what you see is an ability to communicate where perhaps previously we thought that wasn't possible. We do know the science of how music helps people with dementia, but what I really wanted to look at was how this changes the experience of care for people who are in hospital and how does it change the well-being of people with dementia and also the experiences of staff who are supporting patients with dementia because we know it can be hard for them to respond appropriately to the distress and the anxiety experienced by somebody with dementia. So does music have a part to play in that too? Those were the things that I wanted to look at. We've been using a tool called Dementia Care Mapping devised by the University of Bradford which actually enables us to measure somebody's level of well-being through the things they're doing, the moods that they're displaying and, and the levels of interaction that are happening around them. We're really getting a picture through the use of that dementia care mapping, how music is increasing people's well-being for periods of time, not just when the musicians are there, because it seems obvious really, doesn't it? But even in the period after the musicians have gone, the conversation continues. Still got dancing feet. <laughs> and we've also done semi-structured interviews with staff and with patients to understand their experiences and their perceptions of being involved with music-based interventions. Do you think you'd like to have more music sessions? You'd love to, yeah, love to. yeah. I signed up, I'm the Thursday person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and we're using video recording um, of the sessions and then subsequently thematic analysis and I think you only have to go out there on a Thursday afternoon and, and see staff um, singing and dancing on one occasion <laughs> with the, the patients to know that actually this has really been a bridge between those two groups of people. It brings the patients and staff and visitors all together and it helps us also know a little bit about the patient because to every point in somebody's life, they often have a song about it. From a point of view of patients who participated in this study, there were some powerful themes that emerged. The first one being identity, that making music actually allowed people to share who they are. One of the participants in the study was somebody who had enjoyed music their whole lifetime. In fact, he'd been the chairman of a, a, a local jazz society and he hadn't always remembered why he was in hospital. But what he was very sure about was his love of music and being able to take part in a session with musicians every week really allowed him to retain a, a very key sense of his own identity. <laughs> <laughs> when they first started, I was a little bit sceptical, arty-farty, airy-fairy, get in the way. But I witnessed up in the men's ward, none of the patients had dementia, but they all interacted. Because they were bored, they all interacted. And to see a guy that was actually an ex-drummer and still drummed in his own band, strumming along on a ukulele, made me realise the value. 
She has said she's a bit tired, so. It's been very human and, and allowed us to see people as they are and their character and their personality and, and not just a patient with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. A participant who worked with us was a, a frail lady who had experienced loss of loved ones, of her own abilities through frailty and, and dementia and was experiencing great sadness and we were able to recognise that and have a heightened awareness of that and, and, and therefore respond with sensitivity and largely that was unlocked via this music intervention. Sometimes when we see sadness we sort of say to people don't cry, don't be sad, it's okay but perhaps we should be allowing that opportunity to be sad and to cry because that's something that perhaps we all need to do from time to time. So I had a gentleman one day that I could see from across the room was getting a little bit upset and so I went over to make sure he was okay and he said, oh no, he said this song means so much to me, it's lovely to hear. And that, so I, I gave the ladies doing the music like just a nod to say, you know, he's really enjoying it. It's not upset because it's, you know, distressing for him or anything like that. He was really enjoying it. Working in dementia care is very much about being able to form a relationship with someone so that they trust you, they feel safe with you. And sometimes it's difficult to elicit a response from somebody who, who has dementia because they don't understand the words, they, they don't communicate in ways that they would have done. Yeah, that's good. As a healthcare professional, if you're able to reach someone, it makes it far easier to treat the medical problems and, and music was a, a key element of that. The theme from this is very much around communication and uh, again how music allowed the non-verbal communication that the participant is, is giving to be recognised and, and understood and we saw that in this case. Different, isn't it? The sounds that they were making with the percussion instruments, with the iPads, it felt very much like the, the sound was reflecting what was happening between them. It was a, a very palpable sense of connection. That then meant that that visit felt very different to perhaps how it might have done uh, without that intervention. The study exceeded expectations, I think, in the sense that I knew it might tell us something about music being useful in enhancing well-being in people with dementia who are in hospital. What I didn't expect was the themes around the, the cultural shift that, that happened in, in the setting um, uh, and, and how much of a difference it made to the staff, um, to families uh, and, and to the, the, the feel of, of that environment. And when you look at the data and you see week one ward being very noisy, musicians being interrupted a lot. And then you see as the weeks progress, staff are starting to come and watch what's going on. They're giving the musicians more space to work with people. They start to participate. They start to share their own ideas about music and how it has influenced and helped them. And they start to then share that with the people they're looking after. And that has had a really important influence on changing the culture in that particular setting. It's changed the whole environment of Arundel Hospital. The staff are more motivated to try different things with the patients. They have introduced games and the patients find it fun. And when you're reflecting fun and you get fun back and you get smiles back, it, it creates a really good atmosphere. Music isn't a medical intervention. 
Um, but what we've been able to do in this study is create some evidence for the, the real value of that. It, it's really shown how we can learn who people are and tap into that to inform the care that we, we, we provide. So I would say overall the study has been a success. It's a strange thing. It rocks you inside. Oh, that's lovely. Magic, magic. That is wonderful. You're okay. There's a breath on you.